Senator Paul Gazelka was elected in 2010, began service in the Senate in 2011, has 12 years worth of Senate service. Senate days served, 4,157. Total days served, 4,886, one day more than Senator <laughs> Kiffmeyer. I, I present Senator Paul Gazelka. I'm not sure how I got that extra day, but I'll take that per diem. <laughs> <laughs> what an honor, uh, first of all, to be among you, but uh, just to be here today. And before I even get in this, uh, I don't want to forget uh, uh, my wife, Mary Lee. As you all know, she's up there often and praying for us and loving this entire body. Came from a Democrat family and made me uh, have a heart. So, but merely, uh, we did it together. I love you. And oh, by the way, uh, Lydia was three when she, uh, when I first ran and here she is graduating from college and uh, you just get to watch all that. And Josh uh, is now married and Isla's up there and uh, by the way, he's starting a hard cidery company, Woodlore Cider, that he'll probably have me pouring cider at. So come on up north. So thank, I'm just very, very grateful for my family and what we've had to go, you know, choose to go through to step into this arena, knowing that uh, not everything is uh, perfect in, as you navigate through family and uh, then in, your, in this position, suddenly it becomes everybody's business. And so just grateful that... Uh, just really grateful for you guys. And I want to say that uh, certainly the staff, I mean, and, and I'll tell you, I never thought the staff less than us. As a senator, never ever did I think that our title was something that uh, gave us somehow more knowledge or more prestige. Very, very grateful for the staff, every single one of you. And not just, frankly, the Republican staff, but Republican and Democrat. And I was surprised that uh, I would trust the Nonpartisan staff, people like Eric Nelman, was incredibly valuable when we're trying to get a budget together. And then somebody that has not been mentioned is Mike Smith, the chaplain of the Capitol, of the Senate here. I wanted somebody that both sides would say, that's somebody that I can trust. And your church has so many different communities, diverse communities that are part of your church, and thank you for your role here. So I came in in 2010 wave, and uh, you know, that was the Tea Party wave, and I, I thought that uh, we were gonna just change everything. <laughs> in fact, there was 21 new Republicans then, and 16 people like Senjim and Rosen, and we were gonna tell them what to do. Because <laughs> we had 21 of us, and you know, maybe I was a little idealistic, in fact, up there, well, that's a couple years later, but when it was me and Limmer and, and Dan Hall, we were called the God Squad. I didn't find out till later. <laughs> but, you know, and I, I am a, I'm a Christian and I'm a conservative and I'm a Republican, but thank God for this place because it forces you to talk and listen to so many different people, all of us, different from what we are, and you grow. Everything's not black and white. And you have to really understand people, and I am incredibly grateful for all of the different people here and all the, the different people that have come into my life that forced me to be much deeper and richer and love more. Uh, and so in that beginning time, you know, Mike Perry was the one, uh, we had a $6 billion shortfall, and he said, I've got this great bill for you. I want you to cut wages of state government workers 10%. <laughs> and I gave him the big thumbs up. Yeah, I'll take that. That group picketed my office, uh, my business office up north. That was the, the first of four different groups that picketed my business, so you kind of wake up. But, but I, I want to say that uh, each year that went by, it, it just gave me more perspective, broader perspective. 
And I'm incredibly grateful for the, the Republicans. I'll just speak to that first. I mean, so many wonderful people, senators that were, became our band of brothers, men and women, band of brothers, and we're fighting for what we believe in. And, uh, and I'll just tell you, we, we were a bit divided when we came in, just so you know. I'm sure the Democrats had the same problem. Uh, but we, we uh, you know, I never thought that, Julie, you and I would be important allies in the end as we were working together. I never thought me and Jeremy Miller would be fi forge these forges because we we're, were on different sides of different issues. But it was really, really important for us to have that, just so that we could come together. But here's the biggest surprise. The biggest surprise, and I'm glad I'm not running for governor so I can tell you the truth about how much I love all you guys. <laughs> but the biggest, the biggest surprise was the key relationships I had with Democrats. And I'm, I'm telling you that because if this place loses that, we don't function. And so for me, it, it, the first two years I came in, we were in the majority. And I had people like Metzen coming up to me and just building bridges, and, and Rod Scoy uh, and Tomasoni. Bach was the evil enemy at that time. <laughs> but, uh, but honestly, and so suddenly two years later, we flip, and now we're in the minority. And who's helping me? But Scoy and Tomasoni and, and people like that were Metzen. And so, Hoffman, you know this, in, in, in commerce, Metzen would go, what does Gazelka want? And I would go, what, is, what does Metzen want? You know, and so that's how it worked. And in, in taxes, I had Senator Rest and Senator Scoy brought me in, 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 into the tax conference committee, opened up the whole thing to me, and just we talked about issues. And I ended up getting one of my key issues done because of those relationships. And that's how this place works. And, and, it's, and I want to just uh, talk about a couple of them that I see here to I highlight for all of you guys. Limmer and Latz. OK, you're not best. Well, you're, you're, you're respected um, opponents. But man, the, you both defend judiciary and the process. And I love that the, the way the two of you go back and forth, but it's respect and it's honor and it's, it's, it's well serves this place. Abler and Hoffman. I mean, you guys are like, you could, you could, Hoffman, you could have been a Republican. <laughs> Abler, you could have been a Democrat. <laughs> I know Roger Reinert's not here anymore, anymore but uh, Roger and Jeremy, uh, Jeremy Miller. I mean, I, I thought about how they just tried to keep this place together. I mean, those are the things that work. And if we don't work at that, it, well, if you guys don't work at that, we're in serious trouble. Uh, because I, I watch how the House works, and I watch how our country is, and I watch how passionately divided and angry the far left and the far right are. And it's, this is the place that it's going to work or it's not going to work, right here. And so that's why I'm really just admonishing you guys. You've got to build those relationships. And you, you, you have to take a risk. That's what it's about. So I will tell you, when I became a leader, um, that was my highest privilege. And I knew that being a leader, people told me that, you know, if you do this, you may not be able to do things above this, which I found out to be true, by the way. But uh, what a joy. What a joy to, to, to um, be the example for the entire uh, state of what the Senate should look like. And I really, really wanted to lower the tone as far as how we treat each other, that we lower some of the caustic things. And uh, I, I hope I did a good job. I hope you know that that was my, my heart there. And you know, so we first took over and it was 34, 33. And that's been, that was my lot in life the whole time. For, for two election cycles, 34, 33, and I don't, you know, a couple people had a heart attack in that first time, if you didn't know that. We had, we had uh, Republican senators whose parents died, and I'm going, I got, and I got Tom Bach saying, I'm gonna take over. <laughs> because we had a one vote majority. And yet, uh, we've, we've managed to figure our way through that because 
of honor and respect and value and love. And that's, that's what I cherish about this whole place. So here's my highlights. Bach was, play, was uh, paying, playing 3D chess, and I only know how to play cribbage. <laughs> and so if you know cribbage, it's 120 pegs that you gotta get to the end. And so he's got all these moves. I'm just moving to the end. And so it was, it was just fun, though, to have that, that battle. And where Tom, you at first were uh, the evil leader of the, of the, the, the opposition, uh, we became dear friends, and uh, really, and it, it helps that we're both from the range. But uh, it it was a it, it was a high honor, because I know you also uh, fought for this issue, this this place. Uh, you fought to make sure the capital was was done right. And what better time to have uh, a leader who is a carpenters union member to make sure that we got this place built right. And, and so I just really, really appreciate uh, uh, the relationship that we had, and I think for the good of the Senate. Uh, this is the one principle that I hope to pass on, and, and I told our team this, is if you just focus on what's best for Minnesota from your lens, we'll get to the right place. And we, we are very, very different, but if you just focus on that, we'll get to the right place. And you don't have to get the credit. If you're, if you're really willing to get something done and you, you don't have to get the credit, it's amazing what we can get done here. And so that's another one. I ended up being, my strength is I, I'm a bridge builder. That, that's who I am. I, I just want to build bridges to get to where we go. I'm going to stand up for conservative values, but that's, that's what I want. And that's not going to change. I'll just finish with this. I, I, uh, you, you've probably heard this, but if you haven't, you need to hear it because this is each one of you here. You are the man in the arena or the man or woman in the arena from Teddy Roosevelt. It's not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man or woman who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasm, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that in his place shall never be, in his place will never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. So it's been my honor to serve with every single one of you. I have no idea what the future is, other than I have no regrets of the past, and for me, it's just a, a heavenly prayer. What's next, Papa? Let's see what it is. God bless you all.